Question three, Rhoda Grant. To ask the Scottish Government what socio-economic impact assessments it has carried out of the new marine protected areas and how many jobs will be lost onshore and at sea in those locations as a result of their designation. Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead. Protecting the habitats and species that exist in our seas is of course vital if we want to see, see sustainable futures for the industries that do operate in them as well as realise the wider benefits for society for our ecosystems and what they deliver in terms of carbon capture and storage, coastal defences and of course conserving fish stocks. We have undertaken detailed impact assessments which are available publicly covering our network of marine protected areas and what these show as long term benefit for Scotland is very positive. Rhoda Grant. Will the Minister listen to concerns of, from fishing communities who have protected the min, marine environment for generations? Had they not, there would be nothing left to designate. They are concerned that the operation of these designations will pose the biggest threat to the fishing industry and indeed to fragile communities for decades. Will he ensure that there is appropriate compensation for workers affected by job losses both at sea and onshore? And will he set up a pace in each area or affected area to help the workforce that will be displaced? Rhoda Grant, of course, speaks of the fishing industry, and I would point out to her that there are many sectors within the fishing industry, some of which believe we're not going far enough with her proposals, and some of which believe we're going too far. In terms of the concerns that have been expressed, however, I have listened very closely to what has been said, and that's why we have had substantial consultation over many months on these proposals, as indeed has the Parliament's committees. And I also announced a three-point plan covering environmental monitoring, including £500,000 worth of support for vessels to participate in that monitoring over three years, as well as monitoring the economic impact uh, and taking other mitigation measures uh, as well. Thank you. Lee MacArthur. Thank you very much. The Minister will be aware that the proposed marine SPAs are even more challenging in imposing restrictions on activity as soon as draft areas are selected for consultation. In Orkney, the areas selected are disproportionately large, offer little scope for mitigation by relocating activity and risk sterilising huge areas of strategic economic importance for the local community and the country. So will the Cabinet Secretary commit to amending the proposals for Orkney Waters to address concerns raised by the local council, Orkney Fisheries Association and others? Cabinet Secretary. Well, so I wouldn't agree with all the language that Lee MacArthur has used in his question. I do recognise there are concerns about the forthcoming consultations over the SPAs. However, we do have European obligations to fulfil, and I do believe the people of Scotland want to protect our waters and our marine environment. Therefore, we have to strike that balance between protecting social, social economic interests of our island communities with fulfilling our obligations to protect the marine environment. And we'll listen closely to representations from Orkney and our other island communities. Kenneth Gibson. Does the Cabinet Secretary share my disappointment that the Labour Party, with their question, appear disinterested in protecting the marine environment? And does he agree that far from costing jobs, marine protected areas will boost them by helping to ensure a sustainable fishery, as well as delivering additional jobs in tourism, angling, marine research, etc.? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as is the case with uh, many issues, we have had uh, rather different messages from different members of the Labour Party, because their spokespeople and I commend them for this, have been very supportive of the direction of travel undertaken by the, the Scottish Government in terms of marine protection, uh, whilst other members have perhaps taken a slightly different view. But what is really important is that there is public support for what we are doing in terms of protecting the marine environment in Kenny Gibson's constituency and elsewhere uh, in Scotland. John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the Clyde Fishermen's Association's concerns about the South Arran Marine Conservation Order 2015-437 for the recovery of the marl beds, which prohibits fishing with gear and certain types of fishing. Does he agree with the Clyde Fishermen's Association that this level of protection is both unnecessary and unwelcome, and that the consultation period was too short and inadequate, and the result of this order is that the Clyde Fishermen incomes and livelihoods will be put at risk by this order. Cabinet <coughs> Secretary. Can I assure John Scott and others that we have undertaken 20 weeks, 20 weeks of consultation on these management measures and as I said previously the parliamentary committee undertook around eight weeks of consultation on these measures as well. I should also point out that many parts of the fishing industry do support what we are doing and wish we were going further, uh, whilst also we have had a lot of support from local communities whose voices also have to be listened to in terms of the future of Scotland's marine environments. Question four, Bill Kidd. 